So are you happy this morning? Are you excited? Are you um, anticipating the Word of God that's going to come to you in this morning? I pray that it will really touch your heart. I believe it's a word that the Lord has given for this time, for this season, for people, just to encourage them, just that uh, people everywhere who listens to this message in this morning will just be encouraged in your heart and just again have faith and trust in the loving God that we serve. Amen? Because it is a wonderful, loving God that we serve. So um, you are welcome to turn your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read a couple of verses there, Joshua chapter 1. And um, from verse 1 to 9. And then also we're going to read... Uh, some other scriptures as well. Okay. Can we just pray over this word? Um, I believe it's important for us to come in before God and just submit this word to Him as well. Father, as we have gathered here in this morning, thank you that, Father, we... We are not together by ourselves, but we've come together to worship you. We've come together as a fellowship of believers because we believe, because we have tasted and we have experienced, Lord God, that you are good. You are faithful to your word and you perform everything, Father God, that you've said that you will. Thank you for your promises. Thank you that we can hold fast again this day to everything that you've said, that you've promised over our lives. And Father, I pray that this word will, in this morning, encourage people and that their faith will be stirred up again, Father, to believe that the fire in their hearts will start to burn again, to believe, to trust, and to cleave to what you've spoken over their lives in the wonderful name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will make this word alive, that it will really be life and energy, and that it will be substance to those who listen to this word in the wonderful name of Jesus. Father, and I also pray that the enemy will not be able to steal this word, that he will not be able to make it uh, not powerful, but Father, that it will go out in power in the name of Jesus, and that the Holy Spirit will use this word again to raise up men and women who in this day and in this age will move forward with what God has mandated them to do, with what God has commissioned them to do. And Father God, that they will see with their own eyes the fulfillment of these words in the name of Jesus. And if you believe this, say amen. amen. Turn to somebody and say to that person, do you believe it? <laughs> right. Okay. <clears throat> I promise you I will not give you an opportunity to fall asleep, all right? So just stay with me in this word. It's not, it's not, the, it's not a long one, just an hour and a half, and, uh, but then you'll be out of here. Okay. So the Word of God is true. The Word of God is alive. I believe the Word of God is um, uh, alive today to, to really speak to you and really um, uh, stir you up in this morning. So let's read Joshua 1 from verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now arise, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses." From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan, and, the, and to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. 
The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have, I not, have not I commanded you, be strong, vigorous, and very courageous? Be not afraid, nor neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Can you hear in this word already how God encouraged Joshua? Amen. Now, if we look at the history of Joshua, and um, at this, in Joshua 1, we see that God speaks to Joshua, and He tells him that Moses is dead. Now, there's something very significant in that. Uh, the Israelites at that point were in a transition. They transitioned from Egypt, where they were held captives, uh, captive as slaves in Egypt. So they had no territory, they had no land, they had no authority in Egypt, okay? So God led them out by the hand of Moses, and He led them into the wilderness. Now, it's very important for us to understand, also for you who are in a transition, you know that you are in a transition spiritually in your life. You are moving from somewhere, and you are moving into some, somewhere, into something. So when God leads you out, He will never lead you out just for you to be in a wilderness for the rest of your life. God's intention, intention God's purpose is always wherever He leads you out of, He will lead you into something new, something greater. Do you believe that? Amen? So uh, if you are in a transition in your life, transition means that you move from one old place to a new place. So you're in between as the Israelites were. Okay, so Moses took them out. Moses was a type of Christ because Christ also led us out of the spiritual Egypt of slavery where we are no longer slaves, but we are now saints, children of God. We are now the sons and the daughters of God. So he led us out of a spiritual Egypt into a promised Canaan, promised land, into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So from, we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Does that make sense to you? You're not under the rule and under the authority of the kingdom of darkness anymore, but now you've come over to the rule and the authority of the kingdom of light, of which Jesus Christ is the king and the Lord of that kingdom. Amen? Father God and Jesus Christ, His Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it's God's kingdom, so we've transitioned into that spiritually. But also in our life's journey, we might, in a, might be in a transition phase, as were the Israelites at that point. So, it's important to understand that you come from something old and you are moving into something new. And in between, God now will come and He will establish certain things with you. He will establish certain things in your heart. So, for you to move forward... So for you not to stagnate, for you not to be stuck in a certain place, right? And for you to move forward into what God has planned and purposed for your life, there will always be promises that God has given you. So it's important to listen to and to understand the promises of what God is giving you, all right? So now there's a change of leadership. Now there is a successor of Moses coming to the forefront. And it's important to understand also that when God spoke to Joshua in that moment, He said to him, Moses is dead. In other words, everything that I wanted to do in and with and through Moses is now a thing of the past. So many people still hold on and still hang on to the things of the past. And let me tell you, you will not never ever move into the new if you still keep on holding to the things of the past. You will remain in the wilderness. You will remain in transition for the rest of your life if you do not move forward with God. Amen? So Joshua had to understand and he had to take the responsibility and he had to take upon himself the call, the authority of what God is releasing upon him as the successor of Moses. Because 
He also followed the lead of Moses. He was one of the spies that was also sent out. And he tread in Canaan. He went with the, the, they were, He was part of the twelve, Joshua and Caleb and all the others. They went into Canaan. And um, so they experienced the land, the new land. They experienced and they saw and they sensed um, and they tasted the new land. And sometimes God gives us a taste of the new land. And he gives us vision. And sometimes we can even tread there a little bit. You know, we can walk in that area a little bit. And we understand that this is the place that God is leading us into. Right? So Joshua had to understand there's a leadership role function that's come upon him. He's the successor of Moses. He cannot fall back on anything of what God did in and through Moses. The only things that he can really fall back on and hold on to was the promises that God gave him. And in this, uh, in this Joshua 1, we also see that. That as I was with Moses, so I will be. What I've promised Moses, this is the land that you are now leaning, leading the Israelites into. So Joshua, his Hebrew name is Ye Yehoshua. Joshua, Joshua, uh, Joshua, Yehushua, which actually means Jehovah is salvation. Jehovah is salvation. His name, his identity within his name means that God Almighty, Jehovah God, Yahweh is salvation. So God will lead you to salvation. In anything that God does in your life, he will lead you to salvation. He will save you. That is what salvation means. Do you also understand that? Salvation means God saves you. So if you experience anything different than salvation, then it's not God. Because God will lead you into salvation, into a new land with good promises. Amen. <laughs> So we need to have clarity on who is this God that is leading us into the new land, into salvation. So it was very clear. God very clearly spoke to Joshua, clearly said to him a certain things. And those are the things that I want, I want to focus on for a little while. So Joshua, the son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim, he was the successor of Moses. And as the leader of the children of Israel, he led the conquest of Canaan. Now, to lead someone into the conquest of Canaan means that there is a new territory, there is a new land that needs to be conquered, that needs to be taken in. And so many people, they are in this transition and they cannot move into conquering what God has promised them. Amen? So for you to conquer, for you to move into what God has promised for you, for your life, for your family, for your children, for your business, for your, uh, 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 all of those things is connected to God's promises and God's promises connected to the promises of God is an inheritance. So that's the reason why I'm speaking to you today about Joshua's promise, our inheritance. That's the whole theme of what God has laid in my heart. This message is about Joshua's promise, what God has said to him in a promise, what he, what he gave to him as a promise is connected to our inheritance. We have an inheritance. Do you believe that? Just turn to somebody and say to that person, you have an inheritance. An inheritance is, is something that, that's waiting for you to take hold of. Your inheritance is waiting for you to take hold of it. It's not just lying there somewhere in a bank or somewhere, you know, in another place. It's waiting for you to take hold of it. So the transition process is when you leave Egypt, you have to cut with Egypt so that you can embrace Canaan. So in between is the wilderness. And the wilderness you can be there for a very long time. So in the whole history of what happened with the Israelites, we see that, you know, it was just a couple of days journey, really, you know, that where they could have crossed the Red Sea, through the wilderness, crossed the Jordan, and into Canaan. It was just a, a couple of days journey, really. But they remained in the wilderness for how long? Forty years, like a generation. 
in the wilderness. They got stuck there. They did not go through the transition. And it's also the same thing happening today in the lives of people. They get stuck in a certain place and they don't move forward. Now, there are certain reasons why people don't move forward. But I believe that God, in His mercy and in His grace today, will just give you clarity of where you are and how for you how to get from where you are now into your promised land and to embrace that and to take hold of that. So it's all connected to the promise that God gave to Joshua. So he said to him in this uh, wonderful scripture that we read that, first of all, Joshua, you must understand, Moses is dead. And now, look at verse 3. And there's so much in verse 3, so much more in verse 3, than I think we sometimes realize. It's a, it's a study on its own. And I'm going to open up a little bit of verse 3, Joshua 1 verse 3, because we know the scripture, but what does this, that scripture really mean? And what does it really say? So listen intently with regards to your own life, with regards to where you find yourself now in a, in a season of transitioning to the new beginning, to the new, to, the, to the new territory, to the new area. Let me just say this to you. In Egypt, the Israelites had no territory. So they had no authority. So they had no rights. They were slaves. So the moment you find yourself in that, it means you're still a, you, you're, you're still a slave. You're not living from your inheritance. Because... In the wilderness, you find your way towards the new, Canaan. But Canaan is all about territory. It's all about land. Because with territory and with land, there goes, there's also connected to it authority, blessing, increase, freedom. All of those are connected to territory, to land. So which are the territories or which are the land that God has given you in your life, in your lifespan? Which are the territories that you can lay hold of and claim to and say, well, this is what God has given me as land, as, as territory, as an inheritance. Because it's in that that you will experience the blessing of God. So what is your territory? Your territory is your family, first and foremost. It's your family, right? That's territory. Your health, it's territory. That's, God has given you health. How many of you believe God has given you health? That's territory. Your finances, that's, that's territory. That's an area. That's, that's, you know, that's land. It's not just physical land. Think about what's happening today. All over the world and also in South Africa, there's this fight over land. It's like land issues. I'm not going to go into that politically, <laughs> but from a spiritual perspective is that's the fight that's manifesting in the natural. Because you know why? It's also the fight in the heavenlies at the moment. It's also the fight where the enemy is trying to lay hold of territory. And if we are not weary and if we are not alert, then he will invade territory in your life that does not belong to him that God has given you, that is your inheritance. Are you with me? Okay? So listen to verse 3. He says, and it's so wonderful, Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses. Now look at this, how God now comes in with the new leader, the successor, Joshua, who's got a call and a mandate to lead the people into the promised land. That's a huge mandate. Amen. So this is on Joshua now. But God gives him this wonderful promise. Uh, and who is this God who can make such promises? You know, we also need to get the clarity in our own lives. And we need to understand. And we, when we walk out here today, you must know for certain, this is the God who gave me the promises. Because He will stand by His Word. He will fulfill His Word. He's got the ability to do it. And He is the superior uh, 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 power and force that is able to do that, is able to say that. He's got the authority to say that. Amen? So we need to understand who is this God that has given us these promises. 
Who is this God who, through these promises, also confirms it with an oath? He's the covenant God who's got a covenant with us. You, you, we need to understand our authority in Christ. You know, we need to understand which is our territory, which is our land, which is our right, which is, which is our entitlement. He's given us the title deed of your own life, of your family, of your health. And whenever the enemy tries to come in and invade that territory, you can say to him, listen, this is not your territory. In the name of Jesus, I've got the title deed. It belongs. God has given it to me. That's land. That's territory in your life. So, God will not lead you out of Egypt into poverty, for instance. That's not God. Amen. Poverty is not an inheritance. For instance, sickness is not an inheritance. Are you with me? Sometimes believers, they settle for things happening in their lives, you know, because they think, well, this is just the cross I must carry and all of those things. And they've got these strange ideas many, many times and lies of the enemy, right? But what is your territory that God has given you that you can say, no, I stand firm on this ground. My, the, 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 the sole of my feet is on this ground. I stand on it. It belongs to me. I'm not the trespasser. I'm the owner. <laughs> Sometimes believers get confused. They think they're trespassing. <laughs> you know? And they yield and they submit to whatever's happening around them. Don't. Don't submit to the enemy. Submit to God. Say, submit to God. Amen? Submit to God. Just sit, turn to somebody and say to that person, submit to God. He's the one that we need to submit to. Amen? So listen to this. Let's go into verse 3 quickly. It says, every place, now that word place can mean a standing place. It can mean a station, a post, an office. It can mean a human abode, like a house, a home. It can mean a city. It can mean land. It can mean region. Um, it's, it's the place that you sit your, set your foot on. So he says, in every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Now that word sole of your foot, we know that's the sole of our foot, of our feet. But it can also mean the following. It can also mean the palm of your hand. So what you lay hold of is also territory. Um, yesterday I prayed for somebody in the hospital and I just realized by doing... Laying on of hands, it means that there's a territory that you are claiming the kingdom of God. And sickness must go in the name of Jesus. And healing must flow because healing is part of your inheritance. Right? Good health is part of your inheritance. Do you believe it? That it may be well with your soul is part of your inheritance. That's the riches in Christ. That's, the, that's what He paid for. So if He paid for it, how is it that we don't Get the benefit of it, or that some believers don't really take that as the benefit. That's what he paid for. You know? Amen. Am I talking to somebody out here? <laughs> right? So, we need to understand what is God saying in this promise. He says, every place, and it can be place, territory, area, region, city, my house, my office, my business, whatever, wherever your feet goes, that's your territory. Amen. Something interesting came into my heart this week as I was thinking about this. God said to me that you cannot claim any ground where your feet has not trod. That's the reason why the 12 spies went into Canaan, because they left their footprints there. Within the footprints were the promises of God, the command, the inheritance. They placed their feet there, their footprints. There's a lot in a footprint. I can talk to you sometime about the footprints that we leave. Amen? But there's identity in a footprint. You can understand when there's a footprint, you see, okay, this is a lion. And you're just, just going to walk around like on a Sunday afternoon picnic when there's a footprint of a lion in the ground. Are you with me? <laughs> You need to be alert there. You can't be asleep then. <clears throat> because that footprint means a lot. That footprint means there's authority because it's a lion. 
You're going to be wide awake. You won't need a Red Bull then. You're going to be awake by yourself <laughs> when you see that footprint. Okay? Be alert. Those are the footprints. So, leaving the footprints. So, the territory, they, their footprints were in their territory already. And they were claiming it. Saying, this is the area. Because, listen, listen to this. It means the palm of your hand. It means also the sole of your foot. Um, that's what it means when he says, uh, wherever your foot shall tread upon. Now, where you tread upon, it's like, um, it's got this whole picture of an army marching into a territory. It's a march. It's a walk into, but it's a march. In other words, the army goes into that territory with the intent of taking this ground, taking this land. It's with a specific, definite purpose that they are doing it. So for what purpose are you venturing into the different areas or the territories that God has given you as an inheritance? Do you go in as a warrior or you, do you go in there as a slave? You know, not knowing who you are. If you go in there as a part of the army of God, then it's not a question of we're going to ask them if they want to. Are you with me? With an army, there's like a militant, this is ours, we take it. There's no two questions about it. So it's with that intent that they went into that ground. It's not that they discussed among themselves afterwards, you know, well, maybe we can take this or maybe we can't or, you know, what shall we do? No, God said, this is your land. Take it. And Joshua and Caleb, they, those two generations, those two tribes, they said, this is what God said, this is what we do. We take our territory. We take our land. And we know the, the, we know the history. We know that, that it was those two tribes that went in and they conquered Canaan. The other tribes didn't. So they remained in transition. That's the place where that generation died out in the wilderness. God doesn't want you to die in the wilderness. He wants you to take hold and embrace your territory. Amen? Your Canaan. That's God's heart for you. That's God's intent. So if, if you've got a, a business or a family or a, your personal life, whatever, God has given you a wonderful promise and He backs it up with a wonderful, wonderful covenant and with a wonderful oath. I mean, it can't get stronger than that. It's, it's the highest authority. It's supreme authority. There's nothing higher than that. Because even when doing the oath, God swore by himself because there's no one higher than him. Swore by himself. And that's the guarantee that God is giving us. So every place where your foot shall tread, that, and listen to the words, is not I will give it to you, I have given you it to you. Wherever your foot shall tread, future tense, I have given to you. Because it is in the promise. It's already in the promise. It's already made out. It's already a done deal. God has said it's already there. It's already for you. It's not I must think about if I want to do it for you. He says it's done. I have given it as I promised Moses. So it's all in God's promise. So what is a promise? You can only make a promise if, you're, if you have the ability to do it. So you cannot promise anybody resources if you don't have the resources. Because that's an empty promise. God's promises are not empty. Because He has the resources. He has the power. He has the ability. You know, It's like that one uh, sick person came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you want to. You can heal me. And he says, I want to. Because he, he, he also could. It's not just that God wants to. He can. He wants to and he can. Maybe that must be one of our mottos on a daily basis because that will stir the faith in our hearts when we just again confirm that he wants to because he can. He can do it. He gave us the promise. Amen. Amen. And he says this wonderful things, and listen to this. He says, as I've been with Moses, so I will be with you. It's all about the presence of God with you. 
It's wherever you go, wherever you find yourself, it's God's presence. I mean, it can't be stronger than that. This covenant God who made a promise and he guaranteed it and he sealed it with an oath when he saw it by himself, he is also the God that is with us in this conquest of the new territory. Amen? We can be encouraged. We can be strengthened by that. I want to read another scripture in Hebrews chapter 6. You can just turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6. Um, and this is a wonderful scripture that confirms, and I want to read it to you. There's a, a couple of verses in that Hebrews chapter 6. And for us to understand exactly what God is saying. Now listen to what he says um, in verse 11. He says, but we do desire for each of you to show the same diligence and sincerity in realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end. In order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggards, but imitators behaving as do those who through faith, by their leaning their entire personality on God in Christ in uh, in absolute trust and confidence in His power, His wisdom and goodness, and by practice of patient endurance and waiting, are now inheriting the promises. So like I said to you, with the promises, connected to it is an inheritance. There's an inheritance of the blessings of God, of the goodness of God. Now listen, verse 13. For when God made His promise to Abraham... He saw by himself, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, saying, Blessing, I certainly will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. Isn't that wonderful? Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. Say to someone next to you, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. That's a blessing, right? But God says, I will bless you, I will multiply you. Because blessing and multiplication means that there's increase on your land, on your territory. Amen? How many of you want land and no fruit on it and uh, it just lies, lies to waste? No. That's the purpose of having land. It's the purpose of being stable, secure, you know, um, and produce, increase, multiplication. That's part of the promise that God is giving us today. So now he continues, continues and he says, verse 15, And so it was that he, or Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently, realized and obtained in the birth of Isaac what God had promised him. Men indeed swear by a greater uh, than themselves, and with them in all dispute the oath taken for confirmation is final. Verse 17, Accordingly, God also in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan intervened or mediated with an oath. So there now the oath comes. Okay? Um, this was, verse 18, so that by two unchangeable things, everybody say two unchangeable things, by two unchangeable things, in other words, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God to ever prove false or deceive us. We who have fled to him for refuge might have, might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Verse 19. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever or whoever steps out upon it. A hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. Where Jesus has entered in for us in advance. A forerunner having become a high priest forever after the order with the rank of Melchizedek. Those are very strong words. Amen. So this is the God who made the promise, and he guaranteed it with an oath. And in Joshua's, that day when he spoke to Joshua, he said to him, I will be with you. He even says to Joshua that um, 
I, I swear, as I sworn to Moses, so I will be with you. So he confirms to Joshua, I am there for you. Be of, str- be of great courage. Be of um, strong encouragement. Be strong um, in your heart. Do not doubt. Do not fear. And that's the thing also that I experience as I walk with people today. During the week and weeks gone by, especially the last couple of months, it's as if fear has gripped the children of God. Fear has gripped them, for many of them, and they are struggling to sort of believe and struggling to get through this haze of, you know, what is God doing and where do I find myself in this transition? But I believe through the Word of God today and through the power of the Holy Spirit, He's breaking off that discouragement in the name of Jesus. He's breaking off that doubt in the name of Jesus. He's breaking off those lies of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's breaking it over your life. If today you sit here and you're going through that and you experience this and you start to even wonder, well, is God with me? God is with you. He cannot be unfaithful. He is faithful. So if you hear anything in your heart or in your, well, in your mind about God is not faithful or He's going to fail you or this is not going to succeed or, you know, God, is for, God has forgotten you or whatever, those are all lies. That's the devil. That's the enemy. And God said to Joshua, listen to this, I'm almost done. But I want you to listen to this very carefully. By two occasions in this uh, this encounter that Joshua had with God, God, in verse 6, said to him, Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Can you hear how God is saying it? You shall, they shall inherit. Be of strong and good courage, they shall inherit. You will be successful. You will succeed. You will not fail. God is with you. He says in verse 6, he says to him, I am, because I am with you. I am, be strong and of good courage. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. And those are the words that you will speak to a, uh, to a very brave soldier who's brave, who's courageous. There's no fear. It's a confident trust that that soldier has in the ability of the army, in the ability of the commander to give them victory. So then, but he says, only um, be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law. In other words, that you may focus on what I am saying to you. The law of God represents what God said. What God is saying. So it means that you need to focus on what God is saying to you and not focus on what the enemy is throwing at you. Some people become discouraged and they come into fear. And, you know, with fear comes stress. And with stress comes less sleep. And with less sleep comes a lot of other troubles and a lot of other problems. And uh, I believe you don't want that. Amen? You don't want that. Okay. We don't want that. We want to sleep peacefully. We want to have confidence, trust in God, knowing that He is able to do what He promised. Amen? So I want to encourage you today. If you sit here and, you, and, and you know, it's, it's difficult for you to see the hope. But listen, this hope, as, as Hebrews says, it goes in beyond the veil. The veil is torn, but it goes beyond the veil. It goes into the very presence of God. It is the very presence of God, Christ Himself. That's the hope. It takes us, in other words, faith is what we need today on a daily basis to give the next step. Hope is where we're going. In other words, by faith, we are going towards hope into the very presence of God. So where will you end up if you continue believing and if you continue hoping? You will end up the throne of God because hope is leading you there to the throne of God. So keep on hoping. Do not be discouraged. Do not let it go. Do not let it slip because God is faithful to what He promised. He says it's like an anchor of the soul. It's the anchor. And what does an anchor do? Anchor will keep you stable. An anchor will keep, me, keep you, um, you know, firm in one place when there's a storm around you. The anchor keeps you stable. 
That's the hope that we have. Are you encouraged today? Are you holding on to God today? Do you believe again? Right? It's the mist gone and the sunshine's gone through. You know, when it's cloudy, the sun is still shining. It's just on the other side of the clouds. <laughs> Amen? But the sun is always shining. God's love for us is always there. God's presence is always there. God is always with you. Just take courage today. Amen. Just bump somebody next to you and say, take courage. Come on, take courage. In the Lord. <laughs> right? Good. We're almost going to pray. But listen to what he says. Let it not depart of you, out of your mouth. That's very important. It's not just to meditate on what God has said. It's not just to hear what he said. It's that it will not depart from your mouth. In other words, it must be spoken by your mouth. In other words, it must. What must depart from your mouth? The promises, the goodness of God, the blessings that God has spoken about, the territory that he's given you. Those are the things that you must talk all the time. Declare it. Declare it. Speak it. It must. That is what must not depart from your mouth. That is what you must hold on to. You know? Because while you are doing it, you are just moving towards your promised land. You are crossing over. You are, you are, you are, trans, uh, uh, you are progressing in this transition towards your promised land. By speaking it, believing it, holding on to it, embracing it, you are progressing from wilderness to promised land and moving into what God has promised for your life. Amen? And then lastly, listen to this. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, nor neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is a very strong word. Where God says to Joshua, I have commanded you. Do not be afraid. It's now not just God asking you and saying to you, He's in his command, is very strong. It's as if by his command, he is driving away from your life the discouragement, the fear, the doubt, the unbelief. Because he says to Joshua, Joshua, I've commanded you, be strong. How obsumous moedig wees now. Stop fearing. Stop, you know, doubting God. Stop with that. It's a strong command. I've commanded, you know, how much stronger can God say to us? And listen, I'm preaching to myself also. Ne? I am behind this microphone, so I'm preaching to myself. I know. You can get into a place where suddenly there's the fogginess of life and, you know, those things. But that's, those are the times that we need to remember. You know, that's the one thing that I heard God was saying to me. In this message, remind, remind my people again of who I am. Remind my people again of what I said. And remind my people again that the who I am, who said it, is also the one who's going to do it, is also the one that is with them. You can't get a stronger message than that for your life. Amen. Who is this God? He's the one who made the promises, the covenants, all of those things. He, he did it. And He's the one who's with you. Amen? Let's close our eyes for a moment. I'm just going to pray over your life. I'm just going to pray that... Um, God, through His Spirit, will just settle this in your heart now. And any blockage or anything that's in your mindset, anything that's harassing you during the night or uh, during the day, is just going to be broken off in the name of Jesus. Amen. For you to be settled in what God is saying to you, to, to be encouraged, to be strong, to be brave, and to progress to what... God has promised you, listen, listen to this. With the promises of God, there's the inheritance. And the inheritance is a good inheritance. 
It's the goodness and it's the kindness of the Lord. Amen. So if you want to just lift your hands with me, I'm just going to pray this corporate prayer. Afterwards, people are welcome to come to the front for personal prayer. Maybe if you want me to pray for you specifically, I'll do that. I'm available. But I believe in the power of, of what God is releasing in this moment. Through prayer, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that God through His Spirit is touching your heart right now in the name of Jesus. Even those who's listening in on streaming or watching the DVD, um, sense the presence of God. God is a great, wonderful, awesome God. So Father, as we, as we gather as we gathered around your word in this morning, I thank you for the encouragement that you encouraged me with, Father, in, in my preparation of my heart before you, and as you spoke to me, and uh, Father, as you, as you spoke to Joshua that day, how he, with this huge responsibility, with this huge mandate and calling upon his life, suddenly upon him, because Moses was not there anymore, but you spoke to him and you encouraged him so, so much. Father, and you revealed your character to him, and you revealed your presence. Father, that he just took courage. As we read on in, this, in, the, in the word, how he just stood up from that place, how he commanded the leaders, and how he, how he, how he went about and gathering the people and took them over the Jordan and conquered the promised land. Father, so by the testimony of that, we can see that you are faithful. You are faithful to your words. Isaiah 55 clearly states, as far as the rain and the snow falls from heaven, doesn't return to it, but accomplish that what it's sent for. So is the words that proceed from your mouth, the promises, the callings, the mandates, the mantles, the, all of those things that you share with us individuals and corporately father so i just want in the name of jesus want to release that right now upon your children and every form of every hindrance every blockage every lie of the enemy every form of deceit deceitfulness that led into um, doubt unbelief stress um, even unfaithfulness uh, uh, even giving up all of those thoughts and everything that goes with it, um, oppression and depression, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just break that off in the name of Jesus Christ right now. By the Word of God, the two-edged sword of the Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb, I just break off all those lies and all of those deceits in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, and I thank you that established in its place, established in every heart, established in every mind, is the knowing that you are faithful, that you are God, you are the God that's with us, you, your presence with us, with each and every one of them, Father. Wherever they go, all the different territories, all the different lands, all the different places that you have given them as an inheritance, we embrace it right now. We take it up, Father. We say, thank you, Lord. It is ours. We are victorious. We conquer in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I just release that on each and every one in this place. Everyone listening to this message in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.